Have you ever felt within you that there should be more to life than what you are currently experiencing? What do you do when deep inside you there is a knowing? That kind of knowing that there is a solution, a way of escape, a breakthrough just up ahead, yet your current reality blinds you to anything else but the pain of failures and disappointments. All of these are nothing new though. Abraham, the father of faith, felt exactly the same way. In Genesis chapter 16 verse 1, the Bible says, Now Sarah, Abraham's wife, bear him no children. And she had an handmaid, an Egyptian whose name was Hagar. Here was a man to whom God, the Almighty, had just told him in Genesis chapter 15 verse 5 to look towards heaven and figure out if he was able to number the stars above him. We are talking an innumerable number of stars here, saints. God said to him, so shall your seed be. Almost immediately, after this mountaintop experience, we are not told that his wife had triplets or quadruplets as a follow-up to what God had just promised him. Rather, we are told of his now situation, what you and I call the now reality. And the reality was that Sarai, Abraham's wife, bear him no children. Can you beat that? When God's promise seems to be at odds with your now situation, what do you do? Sarai and Abraham tried to help God, and the result was Ishmael, but that result was not what God had in mind for him or for them. After a prolonged wilderness experience of 13 years, in which it appeared that God was distant from Abraham, relationship and fellowship wise, because of of Abraham taking matters into his own hands, God then calls a truce and says to Abraham, Genesis chapter 17, verses 1 and 2, I am the Almighty. Obey me and live as you should. I will prepare a contract between us, guaranteeing to make you into a mighty nation. In fact, you shall be the father of not only one nation, but a multitude of nations. God was reminding Abraham, as he is reminding us today, that he remembers what he has promised you before now, that he has not changed his mind. All he asked for was that Abraham obey him and live as he ought to live. Another translation says, Abraham, walk before me and be perfect. He requires the same of you and I today also. There are a few things we can learn from Abraham's understanding of what God meant by obey me and live as you should. Firstly, it enabled him to believe the promise of God as unshakable. Romans chapter 4 verse 18, the Bible says, Who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. Secondly, it enabled him to appreciate the process by which God does his things, which is divine and supernatural. Romans chapter 4, I'm talking verse 19 now. And being not weak in faith, Abraham considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. Thirdly, Abraham's understanding of this instruction enabled him to be fully persuaded of the certainty of actualization and performance of God's word. Verse 20, Romans chapter 4, verse 20. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Lastly, and quite significantly, it enabled Abraham and us too to appreciate the purpose of God's constant grilling of his people. The purpose being that our entire walk with God must be by personal choice, not coercion, and it must be of faith, so that it might be of grace. Brothers and sisters, Whenever you are tempted to feel the frustration of tension between God's promise and your now reality, remind yourself of the lessons of Abraham, the lessons he learned in his obedience to God and in working with God. Never lose faith. Believe that the promise of God to you is unshakable. Appreciate that the processes of God are often supernatural and divine. Be fully persuaded that there will be a performance. I'm talking about a manifestation of his word of promise and always remember that the purpose of why he takes us through what he takes us through is to build up a character of faith and faithfulness in us. I hope 
that the entering in of God's word has brought illumination, clarity, and understanding in your heart today. I pray that it did. I look forward to speaking to you again soon. And as I thank you for watching and for listening, I want you to know that it has been Pastor B.E. Ajala speaking to you about God's word and its relevance still for today. God bless you and thank you.